Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gershwan, and today we're going to be talking about the Black Templars. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40K lore videos every single day. If you have any suggestions, please comment down below. But with that said, let's get into 40 Facts on the Black Templars. The Black Templars are one of the original Loyalist successor chapters of the Imperial Fist, coming from the gene seed of the Primarch Rokul Dorn. What makes the Black Templars unique amongst their Space Marine brethren is their belief in the God Emperor of Mankind. This righteous veneration of the Emperor evolved throughout the years, but first began with Sigismund, the first chapter master of the Black Templars. Unlike most Astarte chapters, the current Black Templars do not follow the organizations of the Codex Astarte, but rather maintain the ancient traditions of crusading laid out by the Emperor of Mankind during the Great Crusade. The Black Templars are the best known example of a crusading chapter in the whole Imperium. Their doctrines, traditions, and organization reflects their particular approach to prosecuting the Imperium's wars. The chapter is divided into a variable number of self-contained and highly mobile forces known as Crusades, each commanded by a marshal whose only superior is the High Marshal of the chapter himself. Under most circumstances, the chapter is divided into no more than three separate crusade forces, though in special times the number has risen to several times over. At one stage, there were 14 known to the Imperium, with each crusade ranging in size from the deployment of 100 Space Marines and several standard Codex Astarte companies. The Black Templars have no chapter homeworld, instead opting to live within their crusade fleets. These are ever vigilant and are always ready for battle. They do establish chapter keeps on every world they conquer or reclaim for the Imperium, both to provide a source for new recruits and to act as a staging post for crusade fleets operating across the galaxy. They have been known to abandon these keeps, only to return and reclaim them later usually exterminating anything foolish or unlucky enough to have taken up residence in their absence. Each crusade fleet is overseen by a marshal. The High Marshal traveled between crusades on his personal starship, the Battle Barge Eternal Crusader. It is said that only the High Marshal has an idea of the Black Templar's full numbers, but it is rumored in the Inquisition that they actually number close to 6,000 Space Marines. That would make them nearly as large as some of the original first founding chapters after the terrible losses of the Horus Heresy. The potential size of the Black Templars has resulted in close scrutiny by some of the more purative members of the Inquisition. Each Space Marine chapter is limited to a strength of approximately 1,000 Astartes by ancient traditions. The chapter's history of zealous loyalty to the Emperor and the inability of an Inquisitor to find evidence supporting the claim of unusually high-standing troops has spared the Black Templars from further revelation of their true numbers. The larger Black Templar Crusades contain multiple fighting companies, each led by a sword brethren of the chapter who has been raised to the rank of Castellan. Due to their preference for engaging their foes in close combat, Few Black Templars are willing to use heavy range weapons. As a result, Devastator squads are rare amongst the Astartes of this chapter. All Space Marines are renowned for their fervent dedication, but the extent of the Black Templars' faith is often described as fanatical. They seek nothing less than to crush every last enemy of mankind. The chapter's dogma reserves a special hatred for particular enemies, especially the mutant, the heretic, and the witch. The reason for this is to be found in the chapter's founding, springing from the contempt in which Sigismund held for Astartes who had cast off their oath and turned against the Imperium during the Horus Heresy. In assuming the mantle of the Emperor's champion, Sigismund delivered the ultimate judgment on those who betrayed the master of mankind, executing them by his own hands. It is the zeal to prosecute such crimes that drives the Black Templars in their crusade across the galaxy and beyond the borders of the Imperium, lending them the strength to face any foe. When a Black Templar battle brother strikes down a champion of the enemy, he is enacting the judgment of Sigismund and through him, the Emperor himself, and continuing a tradition established at the height of the Imperium's most terrible crisis. For 10,000 standard years, the Black Templars have crusaded to prove their loyalty, 
in this creed has become so embedded in their doctrines that they are utterly ruthless towards anyone or anything perceived as a threat to the emperor. Unlike most other chapters of the Adeptus Astarte, the Black Templars have come to revere the emperor as the god of mankind, just as the mortals of the Imperium do, and this belief has driven them to new heights of fanaticism. However, the Black Templars are first and foremost space marines, and so even their faith is superhuman in its focus and dedication. Their grueling rites are every bit as tasking as their battle drills. To the Black Templars, ceremonial dedication to the Emperor and their martial drilling are one in the same. The Black Templars have been known to mercilessly wipe out entire planetary populations to expunge the sin of heresy, while the mere presence of a witch on the battlefield drives them into a zealot fury against which few enemies have any hope of standing. The Black Templar's professed loathing of the witch even extends to those psychers in the employ of the Imperium. Although the chapter must utilize astropaths, navigators, and others with such warp spawn talents, the Black Templars are loath to do so, and eschew the use of librarians in their ranks. When not engaged in battle, the Brethren of the Black Templars are invariably to be found prepping for battle. They pass their time in prayer and meditation, or engage in exacting training rituals. Those initiates entrusted with the training of a neophyte spend long hours passing on their knowledge to their young apprentice, and supervising endless drills, practice sessions, and trials. The brethren frequently impose upon themselves many hardships, foregoing all but the bare necessities in order to purify themselves in the eyes of the emperor and their primarch, and to emulate the example of their founder, Sigismund. When serving alongside the Battle Brothers of other Space Marine chapters, many Black Templars prepare themselves through long fasts and week-long vigils in order to tolerate the presence of Space Marine librarians. For those who serve a long vigil in the Death Watch, fighting alongside a brother Space Marine who wields psychic powers is a practical hardship, a trial they must undergo in order to serve the Emperor more fully and to strike down the hated alien. For this reason, Great care is undertaken when selecting a Black Templar for secondment to the Death Watch, for only a brother able to contain his deep-seated intolerance against psychers will be able to fight to his full capacity. Despite this, even these individuals are likely to pass every hour not spent fighting in deep contemplation and prayer, often cloistering themselves away from their fellow Death Watch brothers in a personal shrine to the Emperor, Rogaldorn, and Sigismund. In temperament, the Battle Brothers of the Black Templars chapter are united by the fiery zeal that burns within the heart of each, a fire first sparked by Captain Sigismund himself, and stoked each day by the auditory of the chaplains and by the exemplar text that each brother reads every hour he is not on active duty. While each Black Templar is inspired by the same crusading drive to utterly crush the enemies of the Emperor, there are nonetheless exists a degree of variation within the ranks. Those brethren, only recently initiated into the chapter as full battle brothers, might be driven to prove themselves in the eyes of their more experienced peers. Only when they have done so will they be granted the right and the responsibility to train a neophyte themselves, for the Black Templars do not maintain a company of scout marines. Throughout his service as an initiate, the battle brother gains experience and wisdom, until he may, if he survives long enough and is judged worthy, enter the ranks of the marshal's household as a sword brother. These warriors have learned to temper the fires of hatred with the wisdom of their years, and they are an example of the entire chapter. Outsiders mistakenly interpret the lack of librarians within the ranks of the Black Templar's chapter, and the fury with which the Battle Brothers slay chaos sorcerers as an intolerance of all psychers. This could hardly be further from the truth, for the Black Templars hold special reverence for astropaths, seeing them as the holy disciples who have actually communed with the God Emperor. Navigators are similarly honored, for their psychic blessing allows them to see the divine light of the Astronomicon and guide the Black Templars through the warp to deliver righteous retribution against the Emperor's enemies. Instead, the Black Templars' adherence is reserved for the deviant alien witches and rogue psychers who embrace the blasphemous dark gods in their quest for power. These individuals threaten to drag entire worlds from the Emperor's light and into damnation, 
for they are conduits through which unholy demons can cross into the mortal realm. So it is that the Black Templar strengthen their souls with the purity of their faith when facing rogue psychers, as they strive to end with a single sword stroke the potential of a demonic assault that could otherwise plunge the Emperor's realm into decades of bloodshed and madness. One of the more unusual aspects of the Black Templar's worship of the Emperor is the chapter's collection of reliquaries. Being a fleet-based chapter and lacking a proper homeworld, the High Marshal's battle barge, the Eternal Crusader, has become the spiritual epicenter of the chapter. It has been refitted many times over the millennia, and its massive expanse is filled with sacred relics, chapels, reliquaries, and devotional pieces. All Black Templars return here after a crusade, renewing vows and adding the newfound wonders to their already vast hoard. Some of these pieces date back to the Great Crusade, banners carried before the Emperor himself, a piece of the First Aquila, a blackened skull reportedly struck by the Emperor's scorching psychic energies, and thousands more. The power armor of the Black Templars is predominantly black and white. The black color is a sign that like Sigismund and the black armored chaplains of other chapters, the Black Templars serve the Emperor directly and with deep faith. The shoulder plate of the Black Templar power armor depicts the chapter badge of the Black Templars, the Maltese Cross, with colors dependent on their ranks and role within the chapter. The cross depicted on the shoulder plates of the Black Templars mirrors the emblem of the Knights of the Ancient Christian Crusades during the early second millennia. The actual application of the color scheme varies across Astartes and individual Black Templars usually decorate their power armor with devotional imageries and purity seals. Black Templars tech marines and tank crews have a predominantly red color scheme, the color favored by the servants of the machine god. However, they still display their chapter colors so not to anger the machine spirit of their tanks and armor. Aboard the Eternal Crusader, the battle barge that serves the High Marshal and the mobile fortress monastery of the chapter lies the Hall of Records, a vast archive where a legion of scribes and servitors toil to record the history and deeds of the Black Templars. Such duties of record keeping would normally fall to the chapter's librarians, but the Black Templars chapter boasts not a single psychic space marine amongst their ranks. It is uncertain how or when the Black Templars ceased to field librarians, for with their disappearance, much of the chapter's history was also lost. Outsiders suggest that the chapter came to worship the Emperor as a god, unlike most of their fellow members of the Adeptus Astartes. They took his decree at the Council of Nicaea to disband their librarious divisions as holy law. Some scholars point to the Black Templar's final battle to end the Calexis heresy in the 34th millennium and the apocalyptic psychic death scream that tore through the warp after the slaying of the Cacodominus as another possible explanation of the lack of librarians. Whatever the truth, the Black Templars have come to accept the loss of their librarians as part of the Emperor's divine plan. If the Emperor decides to once again bless the Black Templars with librarians, they will embrace it. Most Black Templars use devotion chains to bind their weapons to their fists on the eve of battle, removing them only once victory is achieved. This tradition harkens back to bygone era of the Great Crusade. The tradition of using chains to bind weapons to one's arm was originally started by the World Eaters when they were still the Loyalist 12th Legion. This tradition, which eventually spread to the other Space Marine Legions after its popularity, had extended beyond the World Eater's fighting pits. Sigismund, first captain of the Imperial Fists, took to the custom with his usual zeal, binding his knightly weapons to his wrists on dense black chains. He had made an impressive name for himself within the bowels of the Primarch Angron's flagship, Conquer, dueling with the 12th Legion's finest warriors late in the Great Crusade. Unlike the devotion chains, the chain of zeal is no such fleeting token. 
It is secured to the weapon and armor with a permanent weld that lasts as long as the Space Marine serves. Because taking off a gauntlet with the chain still attached is a shameful act that entails great dishonor, the wearer of the Chain of Zeal must keep his armored glove donned and weapon in hand every minute for the rest of his life. The Black Templars have many relics like the Armor of Faith. The Armor of Faith is the traditional name given to the suit of artificer armor gifted to the Emperor's Champion, chosen from the finest artificer armor available to the chapter and then inscribed with sacred words. The armor offers greater protection than any ordinary suit of power armor, allowing the Emperor's Champion to complete his holy duty, such as the protection of its wards that some blows and rounds are simply turned aside or flashed to nothing in a blaze of divine power. Armor of the Remorseless Crusader This suit of artificer armor is one of a trinity crafted by the artificers of the Black Templars. Each suit is gilded with shards of the warp and said to have the blood of saints layered into the thousand folds of its construction. The armor of the Pitiless Crusader and the Fearless Crusader remain within the chapter, but one suit, the armor of the Remorseless Crusader, was given to the Death Watch. Black Sword of Sigismund is the legendary black sword wielded by the first Captain Sigismund, the first High Marshal of the Black Templars, and it is kept in a place of honor in the most sacred chapel of the Black Templars chapter. The traditional weapon of the Emperor's Champion is the Black Sword, a massive two-handed power sword blessed by the chapter chaplains. It becomes a deadly weapon in the hands of the Chosen of the Black Templars. Such is the skill with which this weapon has been crafted that the Emperor's Champion can either wield it with two hands or one-handed as a normal Astartes power sword. Sword of Dorn is the blade that was carried by Rogel Dorn, Primarch of the Imperial Fist Legion, and was shattered when Dorn broke it over his knee after returning from Horus' flagship, Vengeful Spirit, with the broken body of the Emperor at the end of the Battle of Terra. Dorn vowed never to wield the blade again as a penance for his failure to protect the Emperor. The Imperial Fist Legion's first captain, Sigismund, kept the shattered blade and had part of it forged into the weapon known as the Sword of the High Marshals. The rest of the sword resides in the halls of the Eternal Crusader, the Battle Barge, and flagships of the greatest of the Black Templar's crusade fleets. As a sign of his office, the current High Marshal wields the potent chapter relic known as the Sword of the High Marshals. It was decreed by the Black Templar's founder, Sigismund, that the weapon carried by the High Marshals would forever remind them of their duty to atone for their Primarch's failure by incorporating the pieces of Dorn's sword in its forging. Black Templar's brother sergeant, Narvrel, bore the chainsword Witchblade into battle against Eldar pirates on the world of Skoth in the Exidan sector. What started as a small skirmish escalated when a webway portal opened on a ridge above the fighting. Through it stepped a black-robed farseer and behind him a stream of Eldar reinforcements. Navrel led three squads to eliminate the new threat. Crackling balefire and slicing shurikens decimated his men, but Narvrel fought through to cut down the farseer. The portal snapped shut and Navrel's chainsword slew many more Eldar that day. It was this deed that led to Navrel's transfer to the Death Watch, bringing his weapon, now named Witchbane, with him. One of the most famous crusades that the chapter had embarked on was the Howling, where the Black Templar's chapter ended the Catholic's heresy. The heresy was an imperial conflict that broke out in the 400th and first year of the 34th millennium, after the Xeno cyborg known as Catacodominus used his formidable psychic presence to control the populace of 1,300 imperial planetary systems. The zealous Black Templars called a crusade against the vile aliens and ended the heresy when they executed the leader. His death scream echoed and amplified through the warp 
burning out the minds of billions of astropaths and distorting the signal of the Astronomicon. Millions upon millions of Imperial void ships were lost in the resulting upheaval, and entire subsectors slid into barbarism without the dictates of the Adeptus Terra to guide them. Another notable crusade is the second purging of Lastrati, which occurred in the 543rd year of the 36th millennium as part of the Athalalor Crusade, under the command of Marshal Gervhart of the Black Templars. Lestrade had become a place of pilgrimage, and for centuries the faithful had come to bear witness to such spectacles as the Hill of Heretics and the Plain of Purity. Marshal Gervhart and the Black Templars of the Athalaral Crusade had come to Lestrade to take heart from the planet's potent display of faith from the past, but were horrified by what they found. The population had turned to barbaric blood rituals and human sacrifices in search of a genetic perfection. The Black Templars realized that the rituals of the people of Lastrati had too much in common with the heretical chaos cult worships of the chaos gods. Marshal Gervhart ordered the planet cleansed of its degenerated inhabitants before continuing the crusade. After four standard years of fighting, the warriors of Marshal Gervhart forced their remaining forces of Lestrade back onto the Plains of Purity. There, they made their last stand at the Hill of the Heretic before their army was utterly destroyed by the Black Templars. Since the Age of Strife, the hot and arid feral world of Cephian IV has been home to numerous savage and fierce warrior cults. While the Imperium managed to exploit some of the mineral deposits found on the planet, the true value lied in its people. Unfortunately, sometime in the 36th millennia, the warrior culture that flourished on the planet was sabotaged by the traitorous Alpha Legion. The belief in chaos was planted and allowed to take root amongst its warrior cults. Eventually, the Chaos Cult's powers grew to such a massive number that an entire rebellion engulfed the world in the 37th millennium. Fueled by their desire for blood and their lust for glory, the rebellion threatened the surrounding system, and so the Imperium tasked the Selet Sons of Dorne to bring judgment on all those who turned away from the Emperor. The rebellion was mercilessly crushed by the Space Marines of the Black Templars chapter in the year 343 of the 37th millennium. With the treachery over, the chapter's marine artificers and an army of servitors constructed a grim and imposing fortress that served to remind the planet's inhabitants of the dominance of the Emperor of Mankind, and as a staging post for the Crusades into the Ghoul Stars and beyond. The chapter keep was also used as a recruiting base, for the survivors of the rebellion that had not sided with chaos provided excellent neophytes for the Black Templars, and far from resenting the Black Templars' continued presence, the warriors of Sefin IV respected their strength and harshness. Though over 4,000 standard years has passed since the fortress was raised, it has always been occupied by at least one crusader squad. Legends told amongst the chapter say that should the keep ever be abandoned or fall, it would spell the end for the Black Templars. As time has passed, the respect once held by the people of Sefin IV has turned to hate and cults once again flourished within the ranks of the warriors of Cephian IV. Though outworldly the planet remained loyal, worship of the Dark Gods took hold. Once again, created by the agents of the Black Templar's old enemies, the Alpha Legion, who had designed and reasons for their own, sparked revolts on the world. On the planet, the Castellan of Cephian IV was Chaplain Develian, a warrior of great skill and wisdom who has served the chapter for over 200 standard years. His experience in battle is passed to those initiates and neophytes who mustered at Cephian IV, and none can doubt his loyalty or devotion to the Emperor and the Chapter. When the warriors of Marshal Uliquel's Thunder Crusade enter orbit over Cephian IV, they demanded fresh neophytes to join them in crushing a spat of Chaos Cultist uprisings in the Dominion of Storms. The neophytes deemed ready to join the Crusade were pushed harder than ever before to prove themselves worthy of such an honor in a last trial by fire. Unbeknownst to the Black Templars, the Chaos Space Marines of the Alpha Legion had formed an unholy alliance with the Dark Eldar from the Cabal of the Sundered Blade in order to prevent the Thunder Crusade from reaching its ultimate destination. 
It seemed that this surprising allegiance was fueled by the desire to capture the Black Templar neophytes and for the Dark Eldar to feed off the catastrophic pain they would inflict. This opportunity came after the neophytes successfully completed their last trial by fire deep in the Heraic Mountains. Surviving few were being escorted back to their transports by initiates of the Chapter Keep. While en route to their rhinos, a force of Dark Eldar launched an attack on the Black Templars in order to capture the new recruits and slay the master of the Chapter Keep. The Black Templars fought a desperate battle to protect their neophytes. Chaplain de Vlaine and his warriors escaped the ambush, but while en route to the Chapter Keep aboard a flyer, a missile streaked up from the mountainside and exploded beneath the aircraft's engine compartment. The pilot had time for only a brief distress call before crashing in the foothill of the Heraic Mountains, only a few miles from the chapter keep. A rescue mission was immediately dispatched to rescue any survivors and recover the warrior's relics and gene seeds. But even as the Black Templars closed in on the crash site, it was clear that they were not alone, as shambling hosts of mutants, heretics, and traitors attacked the survivors. The enemy had revealed its hand too early with this attack and the Black Templars readied themselves for a full assault. Soon enough, a vast host of enemies advanced on the Chapter Keep, led by Chaos Space Marines from the Alpha Legion and a dangerous rogue psyker of terrifying power. For days, the forces of Chaos battled the Black Templars, dying in their thousands as the guns of the Chapter Keep scythed their enemies down. Chaplain de Vlaine knew that he had to end the battle quickly and resolved to lead a strike force into the heart of the enemy to slay their leader. During the ensuing battle, the Castellan slew the rogue Psyker, while the Emperor's champion, Meriquand, single-handedly took on a Chaos Defiler. The valiant warrior danced past the claws of the clumsy Defiler and rammed his black sword upward into its belly, utterly destroying the demonic spirit within. Howling in pain, the Defiler crashed to the ground, a shattered wreck utterly destroyed. The Black Templars displayed their typical fortitude and tenacity in the defense of their chapter keep driving the forces of Chaos into retreat. Thanks to the unreliability of their firearms, the mutants had eliminated a great many of their own numbers themselves, forcing the remaining wretches to flee before the might of the Space Marines. The Black Templars showed no mercy to those that had somehow survived their final counterattack, slaying any and all survivors. Facts on the Black Templars The second purging of Lestrade occurred in the 36th millennium, as part of the Athelor Crusade, under the command of Marshal Gerbhardt of the Black Templar Space Marine Chapter. During Lestrade's tumultuous past, a sect known as the Divine Army had gained control of the unremarkable hive world of Lestrade, located in the Ultima Segmentum. The Divine Army preached a doctrine of intolerance of those with the slightest deviation from what their leaders viewed as the physical attributes of the perfect human being. They created genetically tailored viruses that targeted particular traits eradicating whole swaths of the population. When Imperial contact was re-established with a remote planet, only two and a half million inhabitants were left of the world that had once boasted a population of 14 billion. The strata had become a place of pilgrimage, and for centuries, the faithful had come to bear witness to such spectacles as the Hill of the Heretics and the Plains of Purity. Marshal Gerbhardt and the Black Templars of the Athelor Crusade had come to Lestrade to take heart from the planet's potent display of faith from the past were horrified by what they found. The Quintarchs of Lestrade had turned to a barbaric blood ritual and human sacrifices in search of genetic perfection. At first, the Space Marines were welcomed as examples of genetic supremacy, but the more the Black Templar saw, the more they realized that the rituals of the people of Lestrade had too much in common with the heretical cult worships of the ruinous powers. Marshal Gervard ordered the planet cleansed of its degenerate inhabitants before continuing the crusade. After four standard years of fighting, the warriors of Marshal Gervhardt forced the remaining forces of Lestrade back into the Plains of Purity, where they made their last stand before the Black Templars at the Hill of Heretics. The army was destroyed, the Black Templars showing no mercy and accepting no surrender. Those deemed free from taint were allowed to live, an act of mercy that was to have repercussions for Marshal Gervhardt in the later years. In the 39th millennium, the Black Templars, led by High Marshal Udaldus, participated in the Jerulus Crusade. The star system of Jerulus was a long, isolated system, only rediscovered by the Imperium in the late 39th millennium on the outer fringes of the galaxy. Attempts were made to integrate its worlds into the Imperium, 
and return it to the emperor's line. But the system had long been prosperous and independent, and scorned imperial interference. The Adeptus Ministorum had sent missionaries from the Minisaria Protectiva to Jerusalem to teach its people about the wonders of the God Emperor and bring the system into the fold of the Emperor's realm. The first missionaries were killed and their ships destroyed, but more were to follow. When more Imperial missionaries arrived, this time they were accompanied by a strike force of the Black Templars to ensure that the Sector no longer rejected rightful Imperial authority. Under the command of none other than the great tactician High Marshal Ulaldis, veteran of the bloody Vinculus Crusade, the Black Templars smashed aside all resistance as they pushed forward into the core worlds. The surrounding worlds fell quickly to the Crusade, but Jerusalem itself was a well-fortified hive world, its many spires protected by formidable defenses. Numerous besiegements were undertaken by the Black Templars, each incurring heavy losses and each promising no swift end to the Crusade. Despite this, it was only a matter of time before starvation and chronic water shortages on the planet forced an end to the resistance but Lulaldis would have nothing to do with such a solution. On the muster of the Castellans, he declared that the crusade would only end on the blade of a chainsword or by the roar of a bolter. Faced by such formidable defenses, it was not until the discovery of the ancient Techno Arcana in the long forgotten depths of a captured hive that the tide of battle was turned. Amidst the tattered scrolls and flickering hollow schematics, marine artificer Simicus discovered the means to develop one of the most feared battle tanks in the Imperium the Land Raider Crusader. With the development of this formidable line-breaking tank, the Black Templars were able to plow into the entrenched enemy and those occupying highly defended positions. With its expanded troop capacity, they were able to safely disgorge a sizable squad of Space Marines or Terminators into the heart of the traitorous hive, and against such lethal opposition, they could not possibly hold. Each of the treacherous spires fell upon the first attack, and within a month, those hives that remained in enemy hands had surrendered, though the Black Templars proved to be merciless in their victory. Following the success of the Crusade, several other chapters requested information regarding the remodeling of the Crusader as tales of its successes spread. In the many years to come, the Crusader pattern became officially recognized by the Adeptus Mechanicus, a mere formality, since it is estimated that the design had spread to hundreds of chapters by this time. As spoken of earlier, the Vinculus Crusade was a crusade declared by the Black Templars against the Chaos Assassin cult warriors who had plagued the Pelaragon Cluster. Black Templar Astartes, under the command of High Marshal Ludaldis, consented to fighting alongside the warriors of Inquisitor Vinculus of the Ordo Hereticus. The Inquisitor, accompanied by a detachment of Adeptus Sororitas from the Order of the Bloody Rose, had traced the origins of a network of Chaos Cult Assassins to Pelaragon IV, a hellish, mountainous world of shifting tectonic plates, marred by constantly flowing rivers of molten lava. The initial Imperial landings were met with little opposition, and eventually the Black Templars, including a young neophyte named Helbrek, and the Adeptus Sororitas, pushed the cult's warriors back to the seat of the continent-spanning volcano. Ludaldus immediately assaulted the fiery mountain stronghold, his sword brethren capturing the main gate and holding it long enough for Imperial forces to breach the cult's defenses. As the Black Templars and the Adeptus Sororitas stormed the huge, pillared interiors of the volcano, Inquisitor Vinculus faced the cult's leader and slew him with his demon blade, though he took a grievous wound in return. This proved to be his undoing, as the new demonic presence that had been building within the cult leader was forced to manifest. In a blaze of dark red light, it possessed the weakened Inquisitor. A massive demon of corn took the Inquisitor's flesh for its own and turned upon his allies, slaughtering Imperial warriors by the dozen. High Marshal Odaldus, the Emperor's champion, Uldricus, and the canonist Jasmine, faced the demon in what came to be known by the Black Templars as the Battle of Fire and Blood. Though sorely pressed, these heroes fought with great strength and indomitable faith, but it seemed as though the demon would prove the stronger. In desperation, Ludaldus hurled a holy orb of Antioch, a bomb infused with volatile holy oils and high explosives, into the central chasm of lava. The resulting explosion tore the chasm apart, and a massive earthquake shook the mountain to its core rocks and pillars crashed down into the fiery pit. The demon-possessed Inquisitor fell to his doom in the lava, and the remaining Imperial warriors sought to escape the collapsing volcano before being buried forever with their foe. Thunderhawk gunships braved the fiery storm to pick up the surviving Battle Sisters and Black Templars, and though many gunships were subsequently lost in the blinding clouds of ash and superheated rock, 
the majority were able to escape. To ensure no trace of the demon and its cult remain, Ludaldus ordered the planet bombarded from orbit to the massive forces unleashed tore the planet's crust apart and buried it beneath the oceans of seething magma. The Black Templars continued to work with the Inquisition during the cleansing of Hive Thetis, a military campaign against the Tyranid Gene Stealer cult discovered by Imperial Inquisitors to exist on the Hive world of Nevaria II. The Black Templars were called upon to aid in the extermination of a small but dangerous heretical cult on the Hive world. This menace was investigated by an agent of the Inquisition's Ordo Hereticus, working within the overpopulated levels of Hive Thetis, a Nevarian Hive city. This agent discovered the towering spires of Thetis, held a more sinister secret than anyone had ever first expected. A powerful and malevolent influence was behind the spread of the cult's influence. Further investigation, along with a very closely covert strike by a kill team of the Ordo Xenos Death Watch Space Marines, uncovered a powerful Tyranid Gene Stealer Broodlord at work. The creature had somehow managed to infiltrate and infect the minds of a large portion of the hive's population without anyone knowing. Years of breeding the gene stealer's foul xenos DNA into the human population of the hive city, as was their standard operation when preparing a world for the eventual consumption of all of its biomass by the Tyranid hive fleet. This had produced multiple hybrid gene stealers who were an abomination to the purity of the human form, and a grave threat to the life of every still pure man, woman, and child on Nevaria too. It became obvious that the Hive was becoming a staging ground for a dreaded Tyranid Hive fleet invasion. The Hive city had to be purged if the rest of the world had any chance to avoid an Inquisitorial Exterminatus order. The Black Templars stepped up to the challenge of returning the Emperor's Light to the Hive. With their usual righteous zeal, the Broodlord and its foul kin managed to anchor themselves deep within the Hive's blackened depths. The removal of the taint would take some considerable time and effort on the Black Templar's part. The labyrinth of tunnels, accessways, ducts, and forgotten settlements in the Underhive proved to be a deadly and unique battlefield. It was here that the Black Templars fought terrifying battles in cramped corridors against the Tyranid menace. Slowly and at a great cost, each sector of the Hive City was cleared from bottom up. Hive Thetis and the entire world of Navaria II was saved from the purging fires of Exterminatus, only due to the singular efforts of the Black Templars. Such a challenge would not be seen again until the Imperion Crusade, an Imperial Crusade declared by the Black Templars against a force of Coronid Chaos cults on the world of Imperion 9. On this planet, the Chaos Force was composed of over 4,000 traitors of the renegade Galthamor 24th Imperial Regiment, along with Gurian mutineers and some cavalry. With only a force of just 30 Black Templars and not enough ammunition to hold the heretics at bay, the Black Templar commander Castellan Athelins attempted to put in motion an audacious plan that required his troops to follow his orders to the letter, no matter how distasteful they may find them. Athelin's second sergeant, Valerian, began to question his commander's going against everything the Black Templars believed in. He ordered his men to make a tactical withdrawal, forcing the frenzied blood god worshippers to advance each time the forces pulled back. By denying them an outlet to satisfy their bloodlust, the heretics were driven into uncontrollable blood frenzies. Unable to contain themselves any longer, the coronet cultists turned on themselves and began butchering each other in their all-consuming desire to spill blood. Even their frenzied leader, a coronet champion of chaos called the Manskinner, was unable to keep them driving forward against the foe. With the cultist ground forces spent after slaughtering each other, two Black Templar strike cruisers arrived in system to destroy the heretics' vessels and make sure that this particular Chaos Warband of Corn was unable to sow destruction and bloodshed across the Imperium of Man. In the aftermath, Sergeant Valerian questioned his commander as to why he didn't explain his plan. Athelins explained that he did not have to explain his actions. As commander, his word was law, for he did not achieve his esteemed rank through chance. His purpose was to lead his men, and their purpose was to follow. If this broke down, then all was lost. Valerian was to do as he was told, and he would not argue, for they were space marines. Some of the commander's men would eventually rise to a position where they too would command others from their chapter. And when they did, they would remember the lesson they had learned on Imperion 9. That day, Valerian learned that above everything, above procedure and mercy, and even above the honor that Valerian held so sacred, there was victory. It was only through victory that they could truly honor the Emperor 
and their fellow man. To fail was the greatest shame. They had retreated in the face of the enemy, but there was no shame in that, for by doing so, they had defeated the enemy. The shame belonged to Manskinner for throwing away his chance at victory by fighting alongside animals, not soldiers. And those were 40 facts on the Black Templars. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, share it with your friends and thank our patrons on Patreon. It's because of them that we can do this. Link in the description if you guys want to support us. It's just a dollar a month. With that said, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. This is Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>